Hello everybody, welcome to another in-depth airsoft review. Now it's been a very long time since I've done one of these, I have found it very hard to get any time to do it. And I haven't really had any interesting guns to film as well, uh, but I've got a couple recently so I'm going to be filming them. This is the WECP, which stands for Classic Pistol, which is what they're calling this. It's obviously a Wolfer P38, I'm not sure why they didn't just call it the, the WE38 or something a bit simpler. The same thing with their new uh, P99, Wolf of P99, why they couldn't have just called it the Wii 99 instead of the God of War, or some stupid name they've given it, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it's a pretty good pistol, so I'm not going to worry about the name too much. Here is the box. Rather interestingly, they have got a picture of Adolf Hitler on there. Uh, perhaps a little bit controversial, I'm sure someone will get upset with that. Uh, anyway, here is the manual. Classic WE Affair, a few different languages, and the best bit in here is of course their little exploded diagram so you can see how it fits together, and uh, you can probably see from this it's quite a complex design. This is a clone of the Maruzen P38, and it's not a straight direct clone, it's similar in a lot of ways and different in a lot of ways as well, but it's quite a complex pistol so I was quite interested in seeing how WE pull this off, because there's quite a lot going on with it. Right, before I actually show you the gun, let's talk a little bit about it. Um, yeah, like I said, this is a clone of the Maruzen P38, which I've shot before, but I haven't owned one. They never felt too good to me, a bit like their P99. They're, they're, they're good collector's guns, but they feel a little bit fragile, and I'm, I'm not completely convinced about their longevity. So I, I never really wanted to actually purchase one of those myself, even though they made some very attractive limited edition ones. This is a kind of a clone, I'll show you later um, when I take it apart. This gun costs about £110 in the UK. It's a similar amount if you buy it from Asia. Now they make quite a few different versions of this um, and I got a little bit confused about what I was actually buying here. They do a long and a short one. The short one stops about there, chops the barrel off and comes with a mock suppressor which also extends the inner barrel. So that's modelled on the P38K which is quite cool. I might be buying one of those in the future. They also do a black and a silver, but as well as a black and a silver, they also do a very high polished, multicolour looking blued gun. And actually the one in the picture here has got that blued sheen to the finish. So when I was buying this from the UK, um, I think it, it was Milspec Solutions, a uh, UK shop that I bought this from, £110. They advertised it as having a slight blue tint to the finish, so I wasn't sure whether I was getting a plain black gun or whether I was getting this polished blue gun. I ended up getting something kind of in the middle. I assume this is the plain black gun though. So it, it is black, but it has a nice sheen to it like they describe. I wouldn't call it a blued sheen, but it is a shiny black metal finish. But then there are some components on it, like this on the top here, that cover, and the trigger bar that do have a high polish kind of bluey purpley finish. So that's quite interesting. Also the magazine catch down there. Um, I assume that's steel. Um, so that's quite interesting that you get a couple of different finishes on, on that gun. I think that, um, thinking about it now, it would have been a bit too much to have that full blued finish all over the gun. And actually, this is probably the most realistic looking one you can get overall. It does have a nice kind of military gun finish. I think it looks pretty good. But we'll, I'll show you that a bit closer later. So, um, it's just a little cardboard insert there. Here is our single sack magazine, very slim of course. And there's also a tiny, that's probably, that looks smaller than one mil, but it might just about be a one mil, a one mil Allen key to do the hop up, I reckon it is one mil. And that's all you get in there. All right, so let's have a closer look at the gun. Like I said, a little bit of silicon oil on it. Like I said, the finish is really good. It looks very nice and it also, just like, um, other WE pistols I've shown to you in the past, like this Beretta, it has a kind of a mock machined finish to it. I'm not sure how well that's going to show, um, I'm struggling a bit with the lighting here, but it has a brushed um, kind of machined look to it. On the, sli on the side of the slide there, you, I'm sure you'll immediately notice that I did manage to scratch it up a bit. That's just where I put it down on my desk and there must have been a bit of um, some little metal shavings or something on there and it scraped a bit. It hasn't gone through to the to the uh, bare metal, but it's put a bit of a scratch in the finish. But yeah, it looks really nice, and overall, all of the casting 
is quite clean and good. A um, little bit bobbly in some areas. In there you can see it's not pitting, it's more just a little bit of roughness to the casting. But generally, if you're not looking too close, um, it's absolutely acceptable and I think the fact that it is metal and has that sheen to it, it looks much better than the plain black um, plastic Marusen version, certainly it's an upgrade from that. Like I said, it has some very high polished parts. Now, this might come across as being silver, but it's just a a polished blue, kind of bluey purple. Right, so let's get the magazine in there. Quite loose in the magazine well, I noticed straight away. I was worried that was going to rattle a lot. But once it's in there, it's actually a very tight gun, which I found very impressive actually, because there, there's quite a lot going on in the mechanism of this, and I really thought that there was going to be a lot of rattling. Right, so when you first get a P38, if you haven't owned one before and you're not particularly familiar with them, you'll immediately notice that it is a pretty slim pistol. It's not quite as slim as some people have sort of made out to be. When I've watched reviews, people have said that they're, um, you know, incredibly slim. It's not crazy slim. I mean, here's a uh, VFC Glock 42. That's, that's properly slim. Uh, this isn't quite that slim. But it is slimmer than... Most of the double stack 9mm you'll come across, of course. But not not incredibly thin, but it does feel very good in the hand. And actually, another thing that will maybe surprise some people who aren't too familiar with these is that they are remarkably modern for such an old gun. Obviously a P30, P38, you're dating all the way back to before World War II. And it has all the features that you'd associate with a modern handgun. Perhaps some people might be a little... Um, unfamiliar with a heel magazine release, European style. So you just, you kind of need both hands. You can't drop it with this hand. You need to push it back and pull it out. Although it does drop free very easily, so it will come out on its own. Um, but yeah, it has some features that you'd associate with more modern guns. So you've got a single and double action trigger. Really nice trigger, actually. I've never been impressed with the trigger on WE pistols, but this one is very nice. It's actually a really smooth double action and a good single action with a just about, you can feel where the break point is. Just show you the uh, reset. Pretty short. Yeah. You also get a decocker. Very similar to anyone that's owned a Beretta 92 or any any Beretta pistol with the slide mounted safety. Drops down, hammer goes all the way to um, right back into battery into the uncocked position. Trigger stays back so it won't do anything while the gun's in safe. And then flick it back up and you can shoot in double action. So I was very happy that WE had replicated this properly. When I first opened the box, this was very stiff. It only really wanted to move to about there and then it would kind of jam almost. What I found was that the gun is screwed together very tight. These two screws in the slide here, if you slightly loosen those, they're the ones that hold the rear sight on, loosen those just a little bit, not so much that it rattles, but loosen them a little bit and this will move much more easily. Now, a lot of people don't like slide mounted um, safeties. I actually kind of like it because it stays out the way of my thumb and get a good high grip without it interfering. And also I kind of like that you can you can load up your magazine, you can put the safety on and then you can just rack it with the safety on and it's immediately decocked. So uh, yeah, I actually quite like this system and I find it very quick to turn on and off. So I'm, I'm happy with that, uh, using that system. Obviously, you can slide catch here, which is quite stylized. I think the whole the pistol as a whole is a really quite stylish design. I, I've always quite liked these, and um, ergonomically, they're they're really good. It, the slide stop is just the right amount of distance away, so that when you're normally shooting, you don't come into contact. But as soon as you need to drop the slide, it's right there. So ergonomically, I find this a really nice gun. Quite a distinctive open top design, kind of like a Beretta. Quite a lot of elements of this you can see um, were either, I'm not sure which way round, whether you'd say that this was influenced by the earlier Berettas or later Berettas were influenced 
by this. But yeah, lo lots of elements of this are very Beretta-ish. I was very happy to see that WE have properly replicated the locking mechanism of the barrel, which I'll go into a little bit more later. Um, what else can we talk about? Black pass plastic grips, of course. They're pretty good, actually. I I'm always worried um, with plastic grips that kind of wrap around and meet at the back like this, that they can creak when they touch together. But actually, these are pretty much... I can't get any creak out of these. They're very solid. They're on the frame properly. Just a screw that goes through there. And um, I did read that you can swap these out with real grips with a little bit of modification. I don't think there's a huge amount of work you need to do. But I think this looks pretty good. It looks very business-like. And this is this is pretty much how you'd see it in, a, in someone's holster in World War II. So yeah, good grips. You've got your little lanyard ring there. Got magazine catch down there that I talked about earlier. It feels quite weak. The spring on that is pretty loose, but it definitely holds the magazine in well. Not much of a click. It can be a little unsure whether it's in there all the way or not. It makes more of a click when the uh, slides open. But yeah, there's no way that magazine's gonna come out. A Little bit of rattle in there. I'm almost tempted to put a little bit of insulation tape on the inside there to stop any rattling, but um, certainly with the slide down, this gun is impressively rattle free. And I say impressively because I really expected this to have a bit of rattle just because of the complex nature of the barrel mechanism, which I'm gonna show you now. So this is a short recoil operated gun with a sort of a locking wedge inside here, which is the silver part you can see here, kind of similar to Beretta's. Uh, in the future, if I take the slide off here, a little bit tricky. Oh, and by the way, that's that's how you do it. You pull the slide back, you flip this down, and it comes off. Best way to do it, actually, if I put it back together quickly. The the hammer seems to have to be down for the slide to come off. So what you what you do is um, cock it, uh, lock back, safety down, open that. Now, as you run it forward, it'll decock the hammer and then it'll come off smoothly. Now, very interesting design in here, if you haven't seen one of these before. You've actually got two recoil springs, um, which are in sort of semicircular channels. Now, they're just a bit more than a semicircle, so it does actually retain the spring in there quite well. You remove those by just sort of lifting it out like that. So um, don't sort of drop this down on a table or something after you've taken it apart, because it's possible those will shoot out. They're not particularly captive. Um, we've got the hammer mechanism in here, which feels pretty substantial. There are some guns that kind of feel like after a while that'll wear down, but it seems quite substantial. And this here is your decocking piece that the slide interacts with. And that is, that's the little uh, valve knocker reset. So it seems like a decent mechanism overall. I would never actually took the Marushin gun apart, so I'm not sure how similar the trigger mechanism is. But yeah, it all seems very robust. Anyway, let's talk about the slide, which is what I was talking about earlier. Now the silver part, which is really quite well replicated in here, is the locking block, or the wedge. I'm not sure exactly what the right term is, but... So this is the, yeah, I'm just gonna call it the locking block. So to get it out of the slide, I, I kind of wrestled with this for quite a while because it was it's locked to the slide by the locking block. And what you need to do is either pull it towards you or push this button here it'll lower the wedge and then it can come out. Right, so we have, w, uh, we have obviously put quite a lot of work into getting this right. It's quite a complex little system. You've got the locking wedge there, that button kind of interacts with it, make sure it's moving as it should. And then inside that you've got an inner barrel that also moves. So there's, there's quite a lot going on. And of course this, to because it's a short recoil gun, is moving inside, so if I just lock this down. Yeah, there's there's quite a lot going on in here and I was really worried that, well, either one of two things was gonna happen. It was either gonna be so loose, you can see um, all these different sort of contact points uh, where there could either be rattle or where it would be so stiff that it doesn't function properly. Because there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of sort of mechanical interference there. Oh, I know what's going on. The spring's come out. I was wondering why it wasn't going in right. 
So yeah, I was kind of nervous that that might be a bit... And the spring's come out again. I shouldn't be messing around with it like this, right? All right, I'm going off topic, so I'll get the gun back together in a second. Anyway, this is the barrel. Your barrel in there is probably a similar length. No, a little bit longer than you get. In It's probably about the same length as a Beretta 92 M9. Um, it is threaded for both the WE silencer adapter and the inner barrel is also threaded. So you can put an extended barrel and the suppressor on here, so you can extend the barrel if you like. Um, I'm not interested in doing that, but you can do it. Now I showed you that very small hop-up screw. That is to adjust the hop-up, and of course it can be done while it's in the gun, since it is in quite an open slide. Speaking of the slow, oh, by the way, the hop-up does work pretty well. You might think that this kind of system with a little grub screw might not work too well. It's still not quite as good as a TM gun, to be honest, but considering the the kind of person that's probably going to be using this more of a reenactor, it's certainly adequate. It's better than you get with the Maruzen. Does shoot better than that. Right, let's look at the slide. Got the open front there. Really interesting sort of lines to this. These are the bits where the, the locking block, the little wedges go into. And the whole design overall is very substantial. Um, you've got a big thick mock firing pin, which is quite cool. It looks a bit too big to me. I'm not sure if the real one has a really big firing pin like that. It looks almost a little odd. Uh, but it's nice that they have got a mock firing pin. And what I'm going to show you next is probably one of the most interesting things about this gun to me, which I really didn't know that it had. And that is, it actually features a working loaded chamber indicator, um, which I say uh, working. It works as in it'll protrude when the gun is in battery, which I know isn't the same as a proper loaded chamber indicator, but I think it's really cool that they've actually... That's actually a little feature that works. That's not something I actually noticed on the uh, Maruzen gun. All right, well now I've got oil everywhere and the springs keep shooting out, so I'm going to get it back together, but I'll show you that. Um, I'll show you how to put it back together. You try and slide it on and the little locking wedge will pop out, so you push that back in. Then you can slide it on, cock it back, close that, and we're back. Right, so that little loaded chamber indicator, this is something that I haven't seen mentioned on any of the reviews I've seen. But it, I think it's just a really nice little touch that actually that actually disappears. So when you cock the gun, when it's out of battery, that little indicator disappears. And then back when it's in battery, it's visible. I just think that's a really neat little touch. And it's something that I think most other companies, um, especially someone like TM, they really wouldn't have bothered doing something like that. And I, again, I can't remember if... I assume that's on the Maruzen original, but it's really nice that even for a quite a low-cost uh, copy of that gun, that they've actually replicated that. So yeah, that's great, and you've got that firing pin there. Uh, let's have a look down the sights. So we've got a non-adjustable post. It looks like it's dovetailed in, but I'm pretty sure it's just one cast unit. And then we've got our, our rear with a sort of semicircle notch in it. So pretty standard of that kind of time period. Quite big though, certainly more usable and chunkier than a, a 1911 A1's sights and or an older 1911. Something else uh, that's quite realistic is you also get a separate ejector, or extractor, sorry, that is a separate part, so it kind of wobbles a little bit. Overall, the attention to detail here is really good. And um, it's a really fun design to kind of fiddle with and to see how it all works. That's the... Um, the short recoil mechanism I was talking about. So the barrel moves back and then that unlocks the slide which then travels. It, does, it can get a little bit stuck when you're manipulating it by hand. That's the kind of thing I was worried about happening maybe when it was shooting, that it would kind of bind up because there's a lot of metal contact here. But um, no, it, it shoots flawlessly. I've never had a problem when actually shooting this. Talking about shooting, here is the magazine. Uh, the valve design is slightly different to the Marusian, uh, the Marusian, sorry, so that's that's an area where they have improved it, as well as the hop-up. It does use a different sort of valve knocker system, which is a bit more conventional, should be more reliable. The Marusians also have a funny little bit of brass in here that moves, so rather than the, the blowback unit controlling the amount of gas that goes between the bullet and the blowback, um, using a little brass thing and a spring in here, it's all in the gun like a conventional gas blowback, so that's good. Anyway, quite nice finish. 
it doesn't look like blued steel, which would have been nice if it looked like a blue steel um, shell, but still, it's made quite well. It's got quite a shiny uh, butt plate there. It has the usual w WE fill valve that doesn't make any noise. Um, I've been using the Garda Power Up Gas, which is kind of my regular gas for metal guns. All right, let's get a couple of BBs in it, let's see how many it'll hold. All right, so I've just loaded the magazine up. Unlike some guns which have a single stack mag that's actually double stack, this is strictly a single stack, so you can only get 14 rounds in here. So you've got 14 in there, and doing the little trick I showed earlier, keeping the safety on, you can cock it, decock it, one round in the chamber, and put another one in, so you've got 15 overall. So. That's enough. Magazines are fairly cheap for this, so it's not a problem. Um, so not a huge magazine capacity, but definitely decent enough. And overall, the gun shoots really nicely, actually. I was quite surprised. Uh, I only say I'm surprised about the, the way it shoots because there's quite a lot of mass to the slide. It's got quite a chunky slide and there's quite a lot sort of going on here. So I, I kind of thought that it might be quite sluggish to shoot. Certainly the Maruzen wasn't particularly interesting to shoot, but actually, this has got a really good snap to it. Very powerful kick. Aiming down there, so a little bit of vapour. Uh, but yeah, very impressive how it shoots actually. It's certainly, it, like I said earlier, it's not quite as good in terms of accuracy as a TM, but it's perfectly powerful. Um, and really good snappy gun to shoot, so lots of fun. Yeah, I was, I was quite impressed with um, how enjoyable this is to shoot. Right, I'm sure some people are going to be a little wary of um, how single stack mags might be with gas. I know that guns like the TM1911s are kind of well known for quite often not being able to finish off the all the BBs in the mag. Of course, this only being a 14 rounder, 14 plus 1, you're easily going to be able to shoot those off. When I've been testing it, it has been cold, um, we're only just sort of getting out of winter. And I've been getting, well, obviously at least one magazine, um, and then sort of another half sometimes, so... 20 shots and that's when it's cold and now it's starting to warm up I, I've been getting closer to two uh, fills of BBs to one fill of gas so that's pretty decent I kind of end up filling the gas between each mag anyway and whenever I'm sort of if I if when I used to play airsoft more I'd, I'd carry a little bottle of gas with me and do that but it's not too much of a concern uh, accuracy is also pretty decent. I haven't been able to shoot this a whole lot, to be honest. I, I find it more of an enjoyable gun just to kind of play with and have on display. And where I'm living at the moment, I'm pretty unable to shoot most of the time. But it's certainly good good enough for... I think the majority of people that are going to use this are going to be perfectly happy with the way it shoots. Um, it's certainly better than the Maruzen, which I think would kind of be my conclusion for this gun. Um that it, like a couple of other WE guns, um, like the Beretta 84, it kind of makes the original a little bit irrelevant, unless you particularly want the, the Japanese quality, and maybe you want one of the limited edition guns that the the original Japanese company has made. I don't see any reason why you'd buy a Western Arms Beretta 84 over one of these, or why you'd buy a Maruzen, again, unless it was one of the special limited edition ones, why would you would buy one over this? I mean, it's it's cheaper, it's metal, which isn't necessary. I've, I've always said that plastic pistols are very good. But for a collector's gun like this, it looks much better and feels much better um, with this nicely finished metal rather than the very plain um, plastic that most of the Maruzen ones um, are sold with. Uh, like I said, there are some limited edition ones that look really good, so I'd understand why you'd go for one of those. But for the most part, um, WE are really making some excellent pistols and I'm I'm quite excited to review one that should be arriving in the next couple of days which is their Mauser M712 uh, which is pretty cool it's reasonably um, priced and you get it with the shoulder stock and everything so I reckon that will be another case of much better than the original Maruzen, Marushin, yes yeah, Marushin that make that yeah I can't wait to review some more of them so anyway in conclusion Get this over the Maruzen, definitely. Um, it shoots very well. Really enjoyable to fiddle with. Lots lots of uh, interesting elements to the design, even if you're not particularly into World War II guns. Yeah, no reason not to recommend this. Of course, I'll report back if there's any reliability problems or anything, but for the most part, well, I mean, completely. It seems very 
well constructed. I can't imagine having too many issues with it. Yeah, so more reviews on the way. I know I always say that and then I don't make them for years, but I can't believe I still haven't reviewed my um, FNX 45. I don't think I ever got around to doing that. So that'll be one that I'll film in the next couple of days, I hope. Uh, it's got a G&G suppressor on there. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.